in the previous episode, we looked at import maps for Rails 7, and that's a new way that we can consume JavaScript libraries within our applications. But alongside of that is also this ES build for Rails that was recently released as well. So in this episode, we're going to bring in ES build for Rails into a Rails 6 application just to see how we would handle something like bringing in Bootstrap into our Rails application. And I'm not convinced yet which is going to be the best route to go, whether it is the ES build for Rails, the Rollup JS for Rails, which is a similar convention, but uses Rollup JS instead of ES build, or if the import maps is going to be the way to go. After having played around with all three methods, I think the Rollup JS or the ES build would be my preferred preference over the import maps, simply because it does bring back a bit more familiarity with how we handled sprockets and also Webpacker without the overhead of the node modules that Webpacker brings, even though we will still be using Yarn to add in our JavaScript libraries, it's still going to be much more minimal in comparison. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt? So in a fresh Rails 6 application, I built this app without JavaScript, just so we don't have Webpacker or anything like that added in by default. I'll first do a bundle add esbuild-rails, and then I'll run the bin rails esbuild colon install. If we run a git status, you'll see that I also added in our builds under the app assets into our manifest, and it also updated our application layouts, adding the JavaScript include tag, which we just have a blank application.js under the app javascripts. And so essentially, in order to develop with ES build, we would typically have a rail server running in the background, but then we're also going to have a yarn build dash dash watch, and it's going to automatically build our application JavaScript files into this app assets builds. So all we have in there right now is an empty function because we don't have anything added into our application JavaScript yet. So let's go ahead and run yarn add bootstrap. So then in the app JavaScript application.js, we can import in bootstrap and we could also drill this down to the disk.js and then the bootstrap.bundle. Once we save this, if we had the yarn build watch running and if we look at the file now, we've now built out the JavaScript file and this is what's going to get served from our Rails application. So when we go to production, when we go to run the Rails assets pre-compile, it'll have the added steps in to build out this JavaScript file. And another thing that we had to look out for is if we import in the bootstrap styling as we normally would, it's also going to create the application CSS file. However, once it does this, then this file that we just created under the builds folder is going to get picked up instead of our normal application.css. And so I would want to probably avoid doing that. And instead, under the app assets JavaScripts, I would just want to require the bootstrap within here. And so if I save this, and if I launch the Rails application, as well as the yarn build dash dash watch, and if we come to our application, you'll see that I can't find the bootstrap with type CSS. So we'll need to come under our config initializers and under the assets.rb. We can add to the Rails application config assets path, and we're just going to add the node underscore modules. Because we are going to have to run yarn install, because we are keeping yarn as a dependency of our Rails application, but we're not using Webpacker. We're just bringing in our libraries through the node modules. And so by doing this, and then restarting the Rails application, we should then be able to come back and refresh, and then we have our bootstrap working. And one thing that I always do to test out Bootstrap is I'll add a modal and a popover just to make sure that things are working properly. So I just pasted this into the welcome index page. And if I come back and refresh, we should then be able to launch our modal, but then the toggle popover doesn't work yet. And so in the application.js, we can import Bootstrap from our Bootstrap bundle. We can create a new instance of Bootstrap called the popover. We can then get a document.query selector, 
And I'm just going to use a selector with the data-bs-toggle popover. And we can set the trigger on this. And we'll just set it to hover. And so just by adding that in. And so coming back and refreshing, we could just hover over to trigger the popover. And we still have our modal working. And the styling is working as well. And so it's going to be important because as our application grows, we're going to have a lot of our own custom styling. So you would want to make sure that you continue to use the asset pipeline as you normally would when using the ES build for Rails and making sure that under your app JavaScript, you're not adding in references to the CSS because that will create the builds application.css and override what you already have set up. And in some cases, that might be your desired output, in which case the ES build will automatically pick up import references for JavaScript and CSS files, and it would build the appropriate files. But that is something that you have to be aware of when using this method. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.